Welcome to another episode of In Range. I'm coming to you today from Desert Brutality 2021. This is actually the day before the main event. This is the staff match. This is the match that we have to run to prove out and test all of the stages before we run it for the main event, Saturday and Sunday. That means that I am part of the staff match, which means I'm not filming with the main crew this year because of logistics. It also means that I'm shooting all eight stages today in one day. Desert Brutality is also a little different this year in that the divisions have been shifted up. We have one division called Partisan that allows you to use just a rifle and a pistol. And you have some categories you have to pick from in terms of the gear loadout points you get. But you only get to have the rifle and the pistol because the rest of the match this year is actually a three gun match. But not with a shotgun, with a precision rifle or a DMR. This year's emphasis at Desert Brutality 2021 is that of marksmanship. The brutality today are the target presentations, and the stage designs reflect that. That's not to say that there isn't physical. There is lots of physical out here today, but it's physical with precision involved. So the partisan people in some instances have an advantage, but in other instances have quite a disadvantage. So I'm going to walk you through what I'm doing today, and you will see my runs, and then I will have other video with collaboration with some of the other people coming here. We're going to have uh, Yari and Yenny from Varus de Lake. Of course, Ian's going to be here, and Mike from Bloke on the Range. They're all going to be here at the main event, but today this video is about the staff match and my eight runs. So I'm in Armored Plus P. Armored Plus P requires rifle plates, but in Armored Plus P at Desert Brutality, it also requires a helmet. So here's my bump helmet. For my precision rifle, I have a Desert Tech SRS A2 Covert with a PBS-1 Wolverine Suppressor from Dead Air Silencers, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm using an ATN Excite 4K Digital Scope, 3 to 14. That's going to be an interesting thing to use on the precision stuff. Les is here from Polaris Logistics, and my What Would Stoner Do rifle got back from Finland just in time for me to put a sling on it and use it today at the match. Still has finished mud on it. Haven't done anything to it. Gonna use it here now in the desert dirt. Probably put a little lube and that's it. But here's my What Would Stoner Do carbine. You already saw me using this at Finnish Brutality, gosh, just a month ago. Now you're gonna see me using it here at Desert Brutality 2021. Additionally, I have a load bearer. My armor vest is finished. This is not Varus Deleka. The company now I think is called Psyonix. It had a different name before it. Uh, Varus Deleka was selling these before they made their own proprietary custom Boris Deleka load-bearing armor vest, but this is using finish plates and it is a finish armor kit. For my pistol, I have replaced the broken Delta Point Micro. I have a Glock 19 with the Acro compensator and light, so this is going to be the pistol that I'm using today. So what we're going to see here today is quite a different event. Uh, like I said, Desert Brutality is always brutal. All the Brutality matches are meant to be brutal. This one's brutal in a different way. Marksmanship. So the first stage I'm shooting today is the Casarda Drill Precision. This one you're going to be using your DMR or your precision rifle. Some people are using bolt action. I am. Some are not. You're going to start 300 yards away from the target. Much different than our standard Casarda Drill, which is only 100 yards away from the target. It's a C-zone target. Relatively small at that distance in field conditions. Go prone. Get one hit on that C-zone target at 300 yards. Stand up. Throw the kettlebell where it lands is where you go with your precision rifle and gain one more hit on that 300 yard target. If you go the whole 50 yards, you get a 15 second bonus for each 10 yards you move. So you have five potential bonuses taken away from the raw time, which of course is a combination of speed, agility, strength, and accuracy. Hi. Hi. Hey, move! Good throw! Body to the left. There you go. Hey! 
move. Get up there. Good hit, man. You got 50 seconds left. Let's go. So my second stage for eight of them today is called Grenadier. You start about 50 yards away from a van and we've got this really cool fun can launcher. It's an AR-15 modified with a tube. You load blanks and you can shoot like soda cans out of it or you can shoot tennis balls. And at the beginning of this stage you shoot a tennis ball at one of the open vans and if the tennis ball goes in the van you do not have to neutralize the targets behind the van. Some people would say that's inconsistent and it might be. But the reality is one of the things we prioritize at Desert Brutality is that this is still a fun event filled with camaraderie and we considered fair and decided against it. And throwing little things like that in that have some levity keep this environment what it is, which is a true and honest competition amongst friends, having a good time but also improving our skill set. So you shoot that tennis ball, it makes it in the van, you don't have to shoot the pistol targets behind it. Put down the tennis ball launcher, run up to the cars, first car neutralize the targets behind that car. If you got the tennis ball, do not worry about the second car. Move to the third car, shoot the, the pistol targets there, clear the pistol, holster, run over to a VTAC target, load your carbine, my instance of what would Stoner do carbine, the 1.5x ACOG sighting system, and get one hit on the mini IPSC target at 50-ish yards from seven of the holes on the VTAC barricade. Did I go in? Yeah, it went all the way through. You're good. All right, so we're calling it in? Yep, you're in. Is that it? Yep. Two from back here. Then move to white. Skip that one. Two more. Back window. Clear pistol. Clear holster.
This stage is the sled drag, 275 yard bays. Start down range at about 20 yards from seven pistol targets. Knock them down, drop the magazine, fire your one remaining round at a static plate. If you miss, penalty. Holster your pistol, run up range, drag a very heavy sled to the next bay. Load your carbine that was on sling, and through a tire engage a dueling tree, back and forth, 12 rounds or 12 hits. Drop the mag, single round at a static target. Miss, penalty. Drag the sled back, run another 75 yards downrange, reload your pistol, seven more pistol targets, run to the middle, drop your mag, single round on static target. If you miss, penalty. The sled drag went really well actually, although that sled is a lot heavier than it looks. So on the first pistol position I just went right through it one for one. Did my thing, didn't miss that static target, that's important. But upon getting that sled you thought you could go real fast, you can't go very fast at all. It's quite heavy and that sand and that moon dust is very difficult. It didn't affect my rifle shooting very much because it's a what was started to carving with a great optic, pretty easy to hit with that. Clear that quickly, brought that sled back, but you can see the effect of the uh, getting winded with the sled affecting my second pistol course of fire because there was a bunch of misses before I calmed down and started making my hits. Luckily I didn't miss the static target which would have been a severe penalty but that's what these stages are about. You see that first ready, calm, collected, one for one. Do the stage when you get the last couple targets not so much one for one anymore. That's what brutality is all about. This is the fall to gap. This is one of the primary DMR stages at this match. You'll see there's an orange square on the ground and a tank trap sort of thing over to the left of that. You're gonna start on the ground here with your DMR or your carbine if you're partisan, and there are targets at 220, 315, 400, and 550 yards. Reasonably challenging to see, although they have been painted orange and have flags to help with that, but these are field conditions across canyons shooting at very relatively difficult small targets. You need to fire at least five rounds at each of those targets to not be, uh, get a penalty for failure to engage. Hopefully you hit them. If you don't hit them, penalty is 60 seconds as it is for everything else in this course of fire. So once you've uh, engaged or not successfully engaged the DMR targets, you will then save your DMR, pick up your carbine, move to the tank trap, and from there you have an 85 yard, 100 yard, and 220 yard target with your carbine. You have to hit each twice with no double taps. Okay. Shooter ready. Stand by. Hit. 
Hit. Nothing? Nothing. Just high. Impact? No. No, that was the other stage. Just high. I can't hear you. You're just high. You're free to move on. Nothing? Nothing. All right, I'm moving. One of the things I hadn't had time to do was get exact confirmation of my mills or my dope at elevation out to 550 before coming out here. It's just the nature of trying to film and run matches and come back from Finland all at the same time. So, wow, what a terrible life. I have to come back from a match in Finland to shoot one here, right? But uh, that meant that uh, I was good out to uh, four and then at 550 things fell off a little bit. Fired a bunch of rounds, realized I was kind of wasting time, wasn't sure if I needed to hold a little higher or lower because they weren't seeing a splash. So I decided to just take the penalty and move on and clean up with my carbine, which did happen. So that went pretty well. And as for some people in general, that stage time was actually reasonable. Now, of course, I want to shoot a brutality match clean because penalties out here are all 60 seconds each. And so that hurts, but I still got four more stages to go. And brutality matches are a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, what I will say is two things. One, <clears throat> that rifle is capable of that, no problem. That is not an issue with the rifle. That was an issue with me. Um, there was, there is a recurring little glitch with the 10 round magazine. Only the second round I have to like angle the mag to get it to go in. <clears throat> that doesn't happen with any of the other fivers. And it happens consistently on the 10 round mag. Not sure. Uh, so, something to consider. The ATN digital scope is really cool and offers some really neat features. It has a laser rangefinder built in, which I'm not using today, but I'm going to do a video on later. It has adjustable reticles, all these things you can do with a digital scope that you can't do with glass. But I will say that it's not the clarity of glass. Um, it uh, absolutely would be phenomenal for hunting. It'd be good for lots of things. But when you're out here shooting at really tiny targets really far away, uh, and you look through some of the better glass scopes out here, the glass is much clearer. Just the resolution isn't quite there. Um, it's certainly sufficient. It's not deficient, but it doesn't do you any favors. Uh, additionally, it's a little dim on the back end, and normally you use an eye cup with that scope, so it's like a rubber eye cup, like a Dragunov almost. And you put your eye in it, and that helps you see the screen, and even in bright environments like this. Unfortunately, of course, it matches. We use protective eyewear and therefore an eye cup won't work. So I have to use it without the cup. And so it was a little dim and it's a little hard to see depending on light angles. Uh, I think the scope's interesting. There's gonna be more about it on in range, uh, but it did not help me in the fall to gap. Fun little side note, this fence line behind me is the Arizona-Utah border. So Utah here, Arizona there, and that's the border fence. Kind of cool. So this next stage is the shield stage. Friend of the channel, Gary, friend of mine personally, brought out this really cool level three ballistic shield. And we're gonna be using that through this course of fire. You're gonna start in the wash, you're gonna run up, turn left. When you get to a certain position, you're going to use your rifle behind the ballistic shield to get hits on targets. You're gonna do four lines with the rifle. You're gonna drop the mag on the last one and get one precision hit using the rifle as cover. You can't just hold the, excuse me, holding the shield as cover. You can't just hold it out there. You're gonna use it as cover. So. 
I think there's gonna be a lot of clever ways to use that. I plan to, I think I plan to use it as a support, like a brace, but we'll find out. Then once you've done that with your rifle and it's fired that single round and it's cleared, you uh, go ahead and sling that, draw your pistol, you move up to another line, and with your pistol using the shield as cover, engage two pistol targets, then you go ahead and abandon the shield, get to the next pistol line and the same two pistol targets offhand or support side actually, excuse me, support side only. This where I drop it? Yep. Shooting over it. Over it? Under it now. Yeah, now you're, you're low right. Low right. Hit. Where is it? Low right. He's shooting high now. Low right. Really? Yeah. Smooth press. Okay. okay, the shield stage looks easy and is not in execution. Once you've run all that distance through the soft sand with that very heavy shield, the rifle part, you definitely want to take a knee and brace off of the shield using it as a monopod. You don't want to throw those shots. But when it really gets hard is when you get to the pistol. First of all, one-handed strong side pistol, but still holding that big old heavy shield. It's challenging, but once you abandon the shield and go to your support hand, Guess what you've been carrying in your support hand for the entire stage? A big old heavy shield. And I went to aim, my hand was literally like this. In fact, it still feels a little bit like that. And so my dot was just everywhere, just moving around. And frankly, it was fire for effect and I just kept shooting until I hit it. I could not get a solid sight picture. Hitting it was essentially luck with my hand just wobbling. So at every one of these stages at Desert Brutality and Brutality matches in general, devil's in the details. All right, three more to go shooting all eight in one day, and that is difficult. It's absolutely getting to me, but here we are, and this is called the Highland Games, and there's a reason. There's a kettlebell on the ground. You start behind that blue barrel with your pistol, and you shoot the 50-yard target with one hit. Put the pistol on the barrel, throw this kettlebell over that sawhorse. Then you run to the other side, acquire your rifle, and from offhand, standing only unsupported, get one hit on the 100-yard steel target downrange. You repeat this back and forth until you have five hits with the pistol, and five hits with the rifle. Hit! Hi. Hit!
you know it when you get it. That's four or five. Last ones. Well, as with everything at a brutality match, it's all in doing it. Looking at it looks simple, executing is a whole nother thing. Each and every one of those misses had nothing to do with the pistol or the rifle. It was me firing the gun when the sights weren't on the target. Literally that. Every time they called a hit, I knew I had the hit before they called the hit. And every time I missed, when I didn't call a hit, I knew I missed. That's the weird thing about being on the clock, shooting a bunch of stages all in one day, being out here in the sun, in the dirt and the dust. The reality is you do stuff, you would normally be like, why am I doing this? And you really only know or try to learn better not to by coming out and shooting stages like this. We heard you like spinners. We've got spinners. There are two spinners on this stage, but three presentations. From up here on this hill, there's a spinner at 200 yards, maybe 175. You have to spin with your DMR. If you're partisan, you have just a carbine, but your DMR. And uh, it is a triple penalty for not spinning it. 180 seconds. So that DMR target matters a lot. Once you've spun that, or not, you will safe your DMR, point it towards the mountains to our left, run down range with your empty carbine, load it at that stair step barricade, and then spin a 50 yard spinner with your carbine. Once you've spun that, you will then clear the rifle, move forward to 15 yards, and respin that same spinner with your pistol. You have part time to do that. Stand by. Is that over? It didn't. I went over. 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 Behind me is the eighth and final stage for me. Some people will shoot these on Saturday, some will shoot it on Sunday. We did it all today, but on this one you start loaded and holstered with these cones right here. And buzzer, pull it out and engage three pistol targets. And you run up the hill to the next position, you engage two pistol targets. Dump the magazine one round left in the gun, get to the next pistol position, you have one high value target. 
don't miss that one. Then you run up to the top of the hill after holstering your pistol, load your carbine, and there's six carbine targets out there, 100 to 200 yards-ish, and you double tap each of them from the top of the ridge. So from here, all the way to the top of the ridge, and then some pretty important carbine targets. Hit. 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 Where is it? Next tank trap. Oh. Within arm's reach of the tank trap. Hit! 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 All right, I just finished the pistol assault and uh, did real well on the pistol. I will tell you that when you drop the mag and you got that one round left, after shooting eight stages and running up the hill, it's pretty psychologically taxing. It's not the shooting, it's in here. The whole time you're thinking, don't miss, don't miss. And when you think don't miss, that's when you miss. So take your time on that stuff. Um, carbine was no issue whatsoever, as you can imagine. It's now well covered in Utah dust, dirt and sand and finish mud all in the same time. I didn't clean it out of the box, just used it today. And I had to, let me think here. Uh, that's right, zero malfunctions through the what would standard do carbine. So that's becoming a, a pretty consistent report and it is the accurate one. So real happy with that. And uh, this thing's a laser beam. The uh, ACOG, that 1.5X ACOG, really like this. I'm gonna say that this is one of my go-tos for the what would standard do concept. Uh, if you don't have a night vision requirement, these are phenomenal and uh, really easy to acquire. Works like a red dot, gives you a little boost, super resilient, super clear, and easy to, easy to acquire on every target, both in Finland and here. Super thumbs up for that. So, don't know the results yet entirely. Only a small handful of us did the staff match. Only two of us did all eight in one day. Um, but the match goes on Saturday, Sunday, and I will splice in the results here. So I mentioned two people shot the entire match of all eight stages in one day. I being one of them, you being the other one. I have this because not smart all the time, right? Why did you do it? Well, when we started testing the stages yesterday, my really expensive ear pro attached to my helmet died. Yep. And something went wrong with the striker assembly on my Glock, so it wasn't working. And uh, you convinced me, just start fresh tomorrow. Do the whole thing tomorrow. So explain, the audience can wonder. That sounds like, that sounds like you're cheating. You're testing stages, what are you doing? Well, you need to make sure they work. What? Yeah. You need to make sure people don't time out. You need to make sure targets don't fall over. I think we had to replace six targets and their systems on this because the targets just straight up fell over. Exactly. So one of the things that happens is you draw up some really cool idea on paper. And then you're like, well, you'll do this, you'll do that. You run over there. You're going to get on the rocket, go to the moon, come back. Turns out that takes longer than 180 seconds. Right. Which is the part time. And you don't really know it until you test it. And you have to test it with a few people. To find out. Across different divisions too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we have like, for example, at this match, we had armored here, and I have a DMR rifle plus a carbine plus a pistol. You were going to go armored, but you ended up going partisan, so I meant you used one rifle for everything. Right. And I ended up doing what I actually told people I thought wasn't the best idea. I used a 556 rifle for everything yep. and an iron sight handgun with extendos and partisan. Uh, I had to make my carry gun work 
for the match, which was definitely more challenging shooting iron sights than a dot. Yep. Um, but I think it was a good experience. So I'll say this, here's another thing that's, that's part of that, is you gotta test these things out. And in fact, a number of the stages have to be truncated. We went, this is literally humanly impossible. Like the, uh, the Highland Games, we originally had eight iterations. Had to be five. And, and we had to downsize it to five. Um, the sled drag, we initially had another back and forth iteration in there. Mm -hmm. We had to downsize it by one. It's too much. And you have to test it amongst a skill set variety, like a variety of skill sets too. So we had everything from novices to experienced competitors mm -hmm. on our uh, RO squads. Yep. And we didn't adjust them if like the novices couldn't do it. No. But if most of the middle of the pack was like at 160 to 180 seconds, yep. with targets left over, we knew then we needed to dial it back. Or let's be blunt, you frequently win matches. I'm usually do pretty good. Right. If neither of us can complete it, something's wrong. Right. Right. So that's another thing. Another thing that people don't really realize about this kind of style of match, Desert Brutality and Two Gun Action Challenge Match and Finish Brutality, is that with the exception of one stage that you already did, which was uh, you know, a blind stage, everything here is upfront and obvious. We don't hide targets. There's no like gotcha. There's no like a corner turn. You see a diagram and it's like, these are the targets. This is the course of fire. They are presented in this clear way. There's no like secret stuff. There's no hidden tricks. There's no secret position to shoot all the targets and save movement somewhere else. You're, it's shoot it as you see it. So the reason that, that I'm bringing that up is that testing a stage does not give you some advantage. In fact, one of the things people say, you're an advantage running the match. Quite honestly, I don't know how that could be possible today for us. Uh, dude, we're worn out. We're hiking <laughs> hundreds of yards out of those hills to set up targets carrying steel. Yeah. We're, we're fortunate we have a lot of help from the in-range Discord. Amazing help from everyone from the in-range But just group. hiking around here, setting things up, uh, surveying, shooting positions, everything like that, it, it's exhausting. Super shout out to Derp Group for that. Right. And but if yeah. you have to shoot the stages again because we had to downsize it, usually you're it worse. Yeah, you're, you're that much more tired the second time through. You want to run up the hill twice? Have at it, man. I, but that's why that's the case. Now, right. one last thing I want to talk to you about is when we were talking about Partisan. I think Partisan was kind of the most interesting division because you didn't have a, you had one gun, but you kind of wanted to make that one gun do everything. Right. Way back in the early 2000s, there was the SDM program going on in which they essentially, not this, but something very much like this. It was a 20-inch barrel, A4 configuration, shooting 77 grain Mark 262. And... Uh, I happened to be around a little of that at the time because I was shooting high power a lot at the time and it was in those circles. And I still to this day think that that configuration is a freaking awesome SDM. Squad designated marksman. It's an incredible, incredibly competent gun. And with that cartridge and 77 grain, you can reach out to 600 pretty much no problem. I, I definitely agree after using it here. This is a 20 inch fluted barrel green, uh, from Green Mountain. Um, I thought I got, said it was White Oak. No, it wasn't white. Oh, it's Green Mountain. It's Green Mountain. I, right. I misspoke about okay. that earlier. Yeah. Uh, but it groups, you know, three quarters of an inch at 100 yards with that 77 grain stuff from Winchester I got and uh, made all the hits on the long range with it. Um, we did test the spinner with both 77 and 55. It's possible. And I found it was like five hits with 77 versus six hits with 55. Yep. The one thing the 77s do, now what's interesting is when it comes to projectile loading at 5.56, um, 55 grain does great. 62 grain typically isn't as great as 55 in terms of groups and accuracy and just blah, blah, blah. 68, 69 grade stuff is like the most supremely accurate. But 77 is a nice middle ground with a good ballistic coefficient that not only you're getting a good tight group at 100, you're having good wind defeating capabilities, you're having a good ballistic calculated trajectory that's consistent all the way from 0 to 600. Mm -hmm. And that gives you that. Like 69, 68, 55, 62, they get moved around. The 77 kind of punches through better. All right. And uh, you know what I also am using is the uh, Vortex 1 to 10 that we reviewed on the channel last year. Yep. Uh, still working, still kicking ass with it. Yep. So. Anyway, so I just wanted, we just wanted to give the audience an idea about what you did and what I did and uh, what it was like to shoot. What's it like to shoot eight in a day? I, I'm going to be crippled tomorrow, <laughs> basically. I was, I was talking with one of our ROs. He's like, how do you like shuffle around like you're dead between stages? And then when the clock is yep. on, you just tear through it. I'm like, well, I have a mindset that pain is for off the clock. So I don't notice it while I'm shooting a stage. It's yeah. like, get it done as fast as possible. Yeah. And then I'll die when I'm done with the stage. Yeah, in that regard, pain is infinite. You can ignore it for 180 seconds. Yes. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, please consider supporting in range on Patreon. Completely crowdfunded endeavor. Um, we do get a little bit from every What Would Stoner Do rifle sold through Brownells. So there are two ways to support us. You can buy an awesome rifle that's kind of, I think, the best AR-15 on the market. That supports in range. Or you can support us through Patreon because we get no other funding from any other source. Not even from Varus Leica. They're just super good friends. 
and therefore invited sponsors of this match as friends. If you can't totally understand, just subscribe to the channel, share with your friends because the algorithm sucks, YouTube sucks, and if you share it with your friends, you're helping us fight that. Thanks for watching.